bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us?
we were in the process of the early stages of building. We drilled four large uh, tunnel-like holes. Some of them ran two and a half miles under the surface. Uh, a number of the early, at that time, a number of the original uh, uh, wells or dr uh, drilling uh, machines that were used were were um, uh, at the rate of up two miles a day. It was fairly rapid. The equipment kept coming up broken. So we wanted to go down and we wanted to send somebody down there, a human observer, or human observers in this case, to find out what was going on. Well, to our total surprise, first of all, the government knew all about it. They didn't tell anybody. Uh, when I saw Green Beret and Black Beret people encamped inside of our geologist camp, I knew something was up. The gig was up. First of all, I knew all about the alien agenda. I'll explain that in a few minutes. The large alien graves had been encamped there for as best as believed possible about four or five hundred years. It had been one of their internal bases. And we we drilled holes right on top of it. All the stinking air, all the black sooty air came right out as soon as one the first hole was sunk and all this soot came up and well that's when it all all the hell broke loose really, all it started. Anyway, after we drilled all four holes, it took about a, two days to drill all four of them. And when you build an underground base, you drill four basic holes, and then you build you know, called stopes or cross-member holes across, and then you bla use blasting equipment, you know, special blasting equipment by the analyzation of the rock formation, and you literally blast out or tunnel out or, or deflagrate or melt rock out to build the large rooms that are required for this underground base. Well, in this process, I was lowered down the basket of one of these holes, and about from me to this elderly woman here in the front was sitting a seven-foot-tall alien gray. The stench was worse than the worst garbage can you can imagine. Uh, the person was at, or the entity was absolutely horrible. I didn't waste any time or reach for my pistol. At that time, as an engineer, I didn't have time to carry all the folder, all of one of these big submachine guns that all the sea spray and the yellow fruit and the, all the uh, outer perimeter and inner perimeter security people carried. I carried old Walter PPK pistol with a nine-shot clip. <clears throat> this was in au late August of 1979. Now, you got a regular suit of clothes. You got a regular clothes on. Plus, you're in a almost like a spacesuit environment, and you're reaching for a gun, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do and then to pop a clip in it and start shooting. And I killed two of them. Yes, they're mortal, and they do die. However, in the process, uh, one of them did this. I rem all I remember is that he just kind of waved his hand in front of his chest and the next thing I know, this blue beam hit me and just literally opened me up like a fish. And every, uh, burnt, burnt my fingers right off of me. And it was some form of electrical force because the kind of like hit, being hit by a lightning bolt burned all my toenails off of me. Uh, completely crispy crittered my left foot. Burnt the shoe right off of me. Um, all I remember is the smoking remains, and I'm laying almost, I'm still conscious, but in and out of, I didn't remember much. And there was a, a Green Beret that was right behind me that risked his life. In fact, he died. But he risked his life. He shoved me back in the basket and hit the button and took me up. And I wouldn't be alive talking to you today if it wasn't for him. I'm forever indebted. He lost his life. 66 Secret Service agents... Green Berets, Black Berets, crack troops lost their lives because the government, our United States government, lied, did not tell us anything about the alien threat. There's a war underneath there, and I'm d talking dead serious. It's been going on since that time. Since late August of 1979, our military, the Russian military, basically the militaries of the world have been in constant conflict with the outer space alien.
is not an alien force already among us. It's already among us. It's already among us. It's already among us.
force already among us. At this stage, the rocket was traveling between 11 and 14,000 miles per hour when a saucer-shaped craft entered the frame. It flew into the frame like this, and it shot a beam of light at the warhead. Now, remember, all this stuff is flying at several thousand miles an hour. So this thing fires a beam of light at the warhead, hits it, fires another beam of light, and then flies out the way it came in. And the warhead tumbles out of, the, out of space. Now when the lights came on, Major Mansman turned around and looked at me and said, were you guys screwing around up there? And I said, no sir. And he said, what was that? And I said, it looks to me like we got a UFO. The live alien that had been taken from the 1949 Roswell crash was called EB. It was short for Extraterrestrial Biological Entity, and all aliens are not called EB. EB had a tendency to lie, and for over a year would give only the desired answers to questions asked. Those questions which would have resulted in an undesirable answer went unanswered. At some point during the second year of captivity, he began to open up and the information derived from Evie was startling, to say the least. And this compilation of his revelations became the foundation of what would later be finished, called the Yellow Book. Photographs were taken of Evie, which among others, I and Bill English were to view years later in Grudge 13. Why do they keep the aliens in a Faraday-shielded environment? because they have a tendency to disappear right through walls. And if you can prevent the transmission of electromagnetic energy, you can stop them from doing it. And if you can prevent the transmission of electromagnetic energy, you can stop them from doing it. In late 1951, E.B. became ill. Medical personnel had been unable to determine the cause of E.B.'s illness and had no background from which to draw. Evie's system was chlorophyll-based, and he processed food into energy much the same as plants. Waste material was excreted almost exactly the same as plants. It was decided that an expert in botany was called for. A botanist, Dr. Guillermo Mendoza, was brought in to try and help him recover. Those of you who have been looking for him on medical lists will not find him there. He was a Ph.D. in botany. Dr. Mendoza worked to save E.B. until mid-1952 when E.B. died. Dr. Mendoza eventually, according to the information that I read, became the expert on at least this type of alien biology. In a futile attempt to save E.B. and to try and gain favor with this technological superior alien race, the United States began broadcasting a call for help early in 1952 into the vast regions of space. If you know they're better than you, and if you know they can lick you, you better try and be friends with them. That's what this effort was all about. The call went unanswered, but the project continued as an effort of good faith. President Truman created the super-secret National Security Agency by secret executive order on November 4, 1952, and until recent years, there wasn't one in 50,000 people in the United States who even knew it existed. Its primary purpose was to decipher the alien communications and language and establish a dialogue with the, nation, with the aliens. This most urgent task was a continuation of the earlier effort and was codenamed Sigma. The secondary purpose of the NSA was to monitor all communications and emissions from any and all devices worldwide for the purpose of gathering intelligence, both human and alien, and to contain the secret of the alien pregnant presence.
Copy that. Clear. Seven, go ahead. Alpha, you attack Hawkeye. This is Houston, take it, seven. Alpha, you attack Hawkeye. Alpha, you attack Hawkeye. Alpha, you attack Is not an alien force already among us? It's already among us. It's already among us. Padre Balducci, allora, lei che cosa risponderebbe a quanti sostengono che gli alieni sono già fra di noi? Non si può più pensare è vero o non è vero, sono veri o sono falsità. Ci si crede o non ci si crede? No, oramai. Ci sono varie considerazioni che fanno dire con certezza che l'esistenza di questi esseri c'è. Non si può dubitare. 